In this tutorial, you're going to learn some more advanced skills for Photoshop, including adjusting tonal values for your photograph, hue and saturation, dodging and burning, and adjusting horizontal lines in your photograph. So let's get started. I'm going to open up Photoshop, and now I'll open up a photograph. I have a folder already on my desktop with my last name and the word photo and I'm going to pull a photo from my originals folder. In this case I have a picture called adjustments that I'm going to use. I'll go ahead and open that and here's my photograph. Now I want to adjust the tonal values of this picture because it's kind of flat. I don't have true blacks and I don't have true whites in this picture. So I want to add some contrast to the picture to make it pop a little more and be less flat. The first thing I want to do is make sure my adjustments panel is open. To do this I can go to window, adjustments and turn it on. The adjustments tool is the second icon on the first row of tools on your adjustments panel. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. This brings up a histogram and it's made up of three triangles. This is your blacks or your shadows, this is your whites or your highlights, and this is your midtones. So now the first thing I like to do is adjust my highlights, which is the white triangle. Basically this means I want to make sure that the whites in the, in the photograph are true whites. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over just a little bit to where the pixels start to pile up. And I'll do the same for my shadows or my true blacks. I'm going to drag this to the right to just where my pixels start to pile up. So now if I click on this little eyeball here I can toggle between what it was, a kind of flat photograph, and then some contrast, just a slight change. Now you may be asking what about these pixels to the left of that triangle? Do I clip those out? And the answer is yes, you are clipping those out. One way to decide how far over to go to create true blacks and how far over to the left to go to find your true whites, here's a trick. You can move this back to the beginning the way it was and if you hold down the option key on a Mac and the alt key on a PC and then drag over your triangle, you can start to see the pixels, I don't know if you saw that, appear. Here is where my true blacks begin. So I'm not clipping out too much. If I were to keep dragging this over, notice how many I would be clipping out and these pixel tonal values I would be clipping out if I started my blacks right here. So I definitely don't want to do that. I want to start and use the minimal amount as possible. So I'll start right here. Same with the white. If I hold down my option key or the alt key on a PC and drag this over, I can start to see what pixels I will clip out if I start my true whites at this point here in the histogram. So I'm going to move this back over just to where these piles of pixels start. There. And notice when I adjust the highlights or the shadows, the midtones moves also. I always like to adjust this and pull it over to the left just a tad to compensate for that. And there's my photograph. I can toggle here and I can see the change that I made. It's very subtle but noticeable. Now I'd like to show you how to adjust the hue and saturation of a photograph. You may get a photograph that has one color that's what's called hot. It's really prevalent in the picture, almost not even natural. So we want to get rid of this. So this photograph right here is, has a lot of reds in it. And I want to take some of that red, desaturate the red, out of the photograph. To do that, I'm going to go to the Hue and Saturation tool in my Adjustments panel. Remember, to get to your Adjustments panel, you go to Window, Adjustments. The hue and saturation is on the second row and it's the second icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. If I change the saturation here without doing anything, 
it will change the saturation of the entire photograph. But if I want to target a specific color, I can use this target icon here and click on, let's say, the face. And here it knows to choose red, and I can desaturate the red. So I'm taking out some of that red so that the flesh tone is a little bit more natural. So I can use this little eye down here to preview it, and you can see the difference. So you can use this target here for any color that may be casting a light on top of the entire photograph and you want to reduce it or increase it. Another way you can take out a cast of a color, so say in this photograph, red, is to do what's called color correction. And you can find the color correction tool on your adjustments panel. It's the little balance scale on the second row third icon. If I click on this, I can adjust the color by going away from the color that I want to remove. So for example, if I feel like this photograph has too much red, I can drag the slider away from the red to pull some of that red out. That's another way of color correcting your photograph, is going the opposite direction of the color you want to remove, or if you want to add a color, let's say add more yellow, I go the direction of that color. Another way to adjust saturation as a whole on a photograph is to use what's called the vibrance tool. And it's on the second row and it looks like an upside down triangle. So I can drag this slider that says saturation to the right and notice how the colors in the photographs become richer. The blues become bluer and the orange becomes more orange in this photograph. It doesn't look very natural. You want to be careful when you're playing with saturation on a photograph because you want the photo to look as close to reality as possible. This is really unethical to do something like this unless you're going for a very artsy effect. So I'll bring this back to zero, value of zero. If I want the pixels in the photograph that need to be improved as far in regard to vibrancy, I can use the vibrance slider up here. And this only adjusts the pixels in the photographs, the tones in the photographs, that need more saturation or that could use more saturation. In this case, it's the blue in the sky and the orange in the stadium. So it's not touching the tonal values that are okay. That's the difference between saturation and vibrance. Saturation is for the entire photograph and vibrance is for those pixels that could use a bit of a boost. Let's look at the preview. There's the original and here's the photograph where the saturation has been improved. There will be times when your photograph has highlights from the sunlight or maybe shadows that you really want to correct. One way to do this in Photoshop CS5 is if you go to image adjustments, shadows and highlights, you can actually adjust the shadows and highlights of your photograph. So I'm going to start both of these at zero, the original photograph. Say I want to improve this turtle's shell because I feel like you're not really seeing the marble effect and the beauty of the shell when there's all this sunlight hitting it. So if I come over to highlights and I adjust this accordingly, I can start to see a little bit more definition and tonal values in the shell as opposed to when I don't have it. But notice that it also adjusts the shadows at the same time. Think of the shadows and highlights as when you adjust the shadows you are lightening the darks. When you adjust the highlights you are darkening the whites and the highlights. So if I were to come over here with the shadows and increase it, notice how I'm lightening the shadows in the photographs. You want to be very careful how far you do this because then the picture starts to look a little polarized. It doesn't look natural, right? So you really want to be very, very subtle when you use this feature. You can use this preview button to show you the start and the finish. Now there's no magic number here, 
I can't tell you that always do 10% or always do 5%. You're just going to have to eyeball it and kind of adjust accordingly. But that's how you can adjust shadows and highlights in your photograph. There will be times when you take a photograph and it's just crooked. Either the tripod leg is crooked or you are not standing straight. Notice how this photograph is crooked. What you want to do is find a straight edge, it can be both vertically or horizontally, in the photograph and you're going to draw a ruler or a rule along that edge. So I'm going to zoom in using my Command Plus, Control Plus on a PC so that I can see what I'm doing. I'm then going to click on my eyedrop tool so that I can go down here to ruler tool. It's hidden underneath the eyedrop tool. If you click on this little triangle on the bottom of the eyedrop tool, you'll get more options and that's where the ruler tool is hidden. Once I have that selected, if I click on one corner of this awning and go all the way across and I'm going to follow the line, so I want to follow the awning itself, the edge of it, and click here, I have drawn a line. Now if I go to image, image rotation, arbitrary, it automatically tells me what I need to correct this image as far as the canvas is concerned. So it's going to correct this image 1.22 degrees counterclockwise. And then I hit OK and there's my photograph. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the difference much better. I hope that you learned in this Photoshop demonstration how to correct hue and saturation, vibrancy, color correction, highlights and shadows, as well as correcting horizontal lines in your photograph. These are just a set of many skills you can learn in Photoshop. And remember, there's also four or five different ways of doing all of these things. What you learned in this tutorial is just one or two ways of doing things. Good luck on your project.